Hey, this is uh, Daryl Olson from the Jackson Fishing Team again. And today I'm going to tie up a March Brown wet fly. It'll be uh, the last last one that I'm going to do for uh, my Smoky Mountains uh, trip here in coming up in May, I believe, early May. Uh, and then I'm going to switch over and I'm going to tie up a few uh, smallmouth flies for, I think in May I have a smallmouth trip up to the Greenbrier in West Virginia. Going to tie up a few for uh, for that event, for that trip. And uh, so, don't, it's not like my last fly I'm going to tie, but uh, it's uh, the last one I'm going to do for the Smoky Mountains trip. And uh, on there. But anyway, um, this is going to be a challenging fly for me. It's uh, actually got a wing on there that will uh, I'll show you and then uh, hopefully I don't uh, don't make a mess out of it like I have with the one I'm going to show you here so let's uh, let's show you what it is I'll explain the materials as I go along this here's the the fly that we're going to tie it's called the March Brown it's a wet fly you can also tie a March Brown in a, in a dry fly version but I'm going to be tying uh, tying this one as a wet fly um, this is the wing right here. It's, you know, that's challenging for me. There's a pair there, but, uh, we'll, uh, try, I'll try to explain to you how I cut it and then put it on there and then, uh, the other materials as we go along. All right. <clears throat> The hook that I'm going to use is a, a Risen's wet fly. I don't know if you can see that. 3761. It's a 1XL long shaft, two extra heavy. And uh, we'll go ahead and debarb the hook. And put that in the vise here. <clears throat> I'm going to use some camel a dot, but you know, camel, that's pretty close to brown. So you can use any brown if you want. Now I'm going to start the thread about an eye width. The hook eye width back. And I'm going to take it to where the barb of the hook is. bring it forward a little bit. Um, the next material is going to be some uh, mallard mallard planks and wood duck. <clears throat> and I'm just going to Take off a few. And then I'm going to cut off those uh, curlies right there. And we want that to be 
about the length of the hook, hook shank. Keeping it on top of the hook. And we'll use some of this here to build up the body a little bit. <coughs> now the ma next material I'm going to put on is going to be my rib. Uh, the recipe I'm following calls for um, some cotton thread, heavy cotton thread. And so I went to Joanne Fabrics to see if I could find some. This was uh, probably the heaviest I could find and cotton. I guess you could use uh, a brown wire rib or something like that, but uh, I'm going to use some thread. I tied one earlier, I didn't think it looked very good with just a single strand. So I'm going to fold this over and double it. Try to keep it on the bottom of the hook. And I'm going to take uh, one of these testing hooks here. And I'm going to kind of hold that hold that like that right there and then put it off to the side. Now I'm going to turn my hook over and it calls for, uh, we're going to put some dubbing. And it calls for yellow tan. Um, I had that, but I'm going to keep it simple by uh, using some hairline hairline dubbing in that March brown. And that's kind of like a yellow tannish color if you were going to mix those two colors together. I'm being a little lazy here. And... Uh, this is dubbing, so I'm going to put some dubbing wax on. And remember that a little goes a long way. So I'm going to put a little bit on there and keep adding for at least a couple inches. And I know I'll probably have to add more after I get a couple inches on here.
that on there. And I put the hook upside down. I don't know if I mentioned it, but just so I can see, watch and control that barb so I don't hit it. And I need a little bit more. Like I said, you can always add dubbing, but you can't take it away once you got it on there. So. And try to get rid of this. The heavier spots. The wax. counter wrap it. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to kind of spin the cord up that rib a little bit. So it maybe looks like one piece. And I'm going to give it four to five evenly spaced wraps. Yeah, and then, uh, well, I cut that off while I was on talking to the wife on the phone. Wasn't thinking I was recording. Anyway, next we're going to do is we're going to put a, a dry fly hackle on there. Or not a dry fly hackle, um, a partridge. Some partridge. And I'm going to, I usually, for these, I'm going to take it about, about in this area right here. On there. And uh, trim off the fluff and create a tip up here. You know, it's a wet fly. It's uh, going to be sparse. You can make it sparse by removing some of the the bottom things. Create a little triangle here to tie in. And I'm going to tie mine concave up. It seems to look better. I don't know. <clears throat> and then uh, trying to fold these fibers back, being careful not to break my tip. And we're just going to Wrap and fold. And then we'll bury this tie. 
this stem right here. build up an area here the, where we're going to put our wing. You know, you could probably fish that right there. But we're going to go ahead and put a wing on there. And uh, I'm using this cool mottled turkey wing right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same size hook and the hook gap and uh, I'm just going to do, do that and that's the hook. That's the piece I'm going to use for one side. And you'll notice i um, got rights and lefts. So the one, one that I'm doing here on there. Now I suppose you could use the same feather and take one from one side and one the other. But going to see like it kind of concaves. We're going to put it on this way as a wet fly and we're going to go concave to concave. And line up our tips. You know if it was a, a dry fly you probably will Put it up there kind of like that, but this is a wet fly. I'm going to put mine so that the curvature is uh, going down. And position the tips maybe about halfway across your the tail. And then I'm going to let the weight of the bobbin drop that down. And pull up. And we're going to take a look. It's not quite centered on the hook there. Kind of manipulated a little bit. That looks pretty good. We're going to lift this up. Being careful not to cut our thread. And we're going to cover that in the crate ahead. pretty good. Pleased. I'm going to add a little head cement and on the fly. And 
do a whip finish. Snip that off. And there we have it. A completed uh, Marsh Brown wet fly. And there you have it. That's the Completed uh, mayfly, or not mayfly, March brown. Well, there it might imitate a mayfly, I don't know, an emergent of some type. But uh, that's it. We'll be tying up a few series of uh, smallmouth flies to, uh, to see uh, for uh, a greenbrier trip for, for smallies. All right. Well, let me. Uh, yeah, that's our uh, that's that little little fly right there. Hopefully, uh, it'll catch some trout here when I go on that Smoky Mountain trip. Uh, like I said, saying a little bit there, we'll be tying some smallmouth flies. Hopefully, we've got some smallmouth people out there. I love catching them. And uh, that's it. Until uh, till next week, we'll uh, we'll see you. Daryl Alston signing off. See you on the water.